There is so much furniture in this room right now, guys, because we're doing some like room transformation stuff um, for, for another room. It's a little bit intense. Can you guess which room we're renovating? Any, <laughs> any guesses? No? All of our room transformation stuff that we've been doing like before and after footage is all going up on Rachel's Life in case you guys like that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, in, in, the, in the interim, in the process of doing things, it's getting a little bit cramped up in here. Share with you guys another full face first impression video and this one was highly highly requested off of the videos that I had done a couple of weeks ago that was five star makeup tested and it was to test the one star rated makeup so today we're gonna start with Sephora and while it was impossible to find a one star rated makeup that was like a decent level of review I wanted to avoid the products that had like two or three ratings because I felt like that wasn't a fair shake at a product so I wanted to find the products that had like over 50 reviews had the least number of stars um, for that particular product and I have them all right here in front of me. Are these products all that bad? I mean some of them are because I had some of them in my collection and I've already talked about how terrible they are. If you like these kinds of videos and you want to see me do a similar one for drugstore products, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. And without further ado, let's get into this. Let's apply some terrible makeup to my face. The first product we are going to be applying is a primer and it is the Urban Decay D-Slick Complexion Primer. This is for shine control, pore minimizing, and mattifying. So it is currently rated on the Sephora website at about uh, 2.7 stars. Not great. Like a lot of people have been saying that it creates a film on your face and then it gets all like crumbly and peely and like falls off your face. It's just terrible. So a lot of people are saying to pat the product into the skin instead. So that is what I'm going to be doing today. I feel like it's very similar to something like the, the Benefit Professional Primer. It's supposed to like fill in everything. Oh, it's like really like uh, sticking to the face. You can feel it drying there. So that may maybe that's a good sign. Maybe that's good. It's gonna like make all my pores disappear. Are they disappeared yet? I can definitely feel it on the face, like on my skin right now, but like when I put my hands on it, it feels like nothing. So that's good, but like I can feel it drying there and it feels sort of like um like a hard shell almost type of thing. Like I feel like if I go like this, it's gonna like crack. Oh, I see what people mean. I like just started rubbing my hands together. It is peeling like you would not believe. Oh, that's disgusting. So yes. Definitely pat this into the skin. I'm curious to see how this is going to wear once it's dried into my skin and I have foundation on top. It's going to continue to pill. I don't know. We'll see. Next up is a color corrector and I recently bought this and it has sort of like mixed reviews. A lot of people really hated it and a lot of people really loved it. And it is the First Aid Beauty 3-in-1 Super Fruit Color Correcting Cushion. This is supposed to correct uh, redness, dullness, and a dark spots. Sort of like camo for your face. And my sister-in-law actually bought this one um, just a while ago and she loved it at first. She was talking about how much she adored it and it did such a great job and got rid of everything and then after four uses it like dried up and then now all that's left is the purple and it's just like completely unusable so um this is i mean i'm going in with like a first impression using the product when it's fresh but that's something to keep in mind is that apparently it just dries out really fast so this is probably not gonna be like a very fair um review of the product because i'm just using it like fresh but yeah just keep that in mind if you're interested in buying this product. I feel like if you had more redness in your skin, like like specific larger areas of redness, it would probably do a better job than like little like acne spots and stuff. And I can see like the redness through anyway, and I'm trying to cover it and it's not doing a really good job at that. All right, cool. Now my skin has like a weird purple tinge. Let's move on to foundation. And this one I know I don't like because I tried this ages ago and I just didn't like the way that it settled on the skin. However, my sister-in-law, Lauren, is obsessed with this foundation. And it is the Estee Edit Skin Glowing Balm. So this product is supposed to be a tinted moisturizer that combines hydration with a bit of coverage to give you a nice, naturally glowing complexion. It felt way too heavy on the face and it just seemed like I was blending it out into nothing. But my sister-in-law loves this foundation, so what do, I, what do I know? To each their own. So I'm going to dab a bit on my face here and then we're gonna blend it out with a brush. You know what I mean? Like I feel like I just, like I didn't put anything on my face. Like I can see nothing. It's done nothing. I don't understand why you like this, Lauren. It has a very, very strong scent to it as well, just so you guys know. I guess it's the pink peony or whatever, but like, it's pretty strong. So next up is concealer, and I had originally bought one that is terribly, terribly rated, and it's the Laura Mercier um, Candle Glow Concealer and Highlighter, but I think the reason that it's so poorly rated is because it's supposed to be more of a highlight that you kind of put on top of your concealer or for like really, really light coverage, and it's not 
very good for like concealing a lot of stuff. So I also have the Smashbox Studio Skin 24 Hour Waterproof Concealer, which I also very much dislike. This one I just find like it doesn't last very long, it doesn't have very good coverage, it doesn't stay where you want it, and I don't know, it just blends out really poorly. You can see that's applying it under the eyes, and it doesn't look too bad right now, but I don't have a lot of like crazy under eye circles right now. So if you have dark circles, do not go for this, it does a terrible job. Like let's try and cover up this like zit down here. Cool still there trying to like pat it on so it like has more coverage but it just feels like it's not staying on well, let's try and see if we can put some of this on oh it's like a puff ball that's fun what I was gonna say is let's try and put a little bit of the Laura Mercier stuff on top will any product emerge ever oh do I see some yes finally whoa that's really dark this is in the shade one, by the way, which is the second lightest. It seems to have um, completely gotten rid of the concealer I had under my eyes. I can see a little bit of a difference in that it f looks a little bit shinier. Is that, is that a good thing? It has a little bit of like a like a glowiness kind of thing going on, but it feels more like greasy. I don't know. I'll keep it just to one side, and I will do just the Smashbox on the other, cause just cause I want to see how this one sets versus the Smashbox one. We need, to, we need to zoom in so you can see this. I want you to like look under my eyes here. You can see right here, it's like not really covering anything, and like I still have redness and stuff on my face and um, looking pretty greasy. Next up is a liquid bronzer, which I'm gonna apply obviously before I set everything with powder. And this one is by Benefit. It is their Du La Hula bronzer. Um, and this is for face and body. I believe they came out with one that's a lighter um, color, but this is their original one. By the way, if you really like these products, that is awesome. Like I, I really do wanna make these products work for me. If there are products here that I've talked about that I didn't like and you really like them, leave a comment down below and let me know how you use it because maybe maybe I'm just using it wrong. Let's go into this color because it's very orange. It's like a nice Oompa Loompa shade though. I just, <laughs> I don't even know how to apply this to my face. I should have put on some self tanner. This was poor decision for me. It does not feel super thick on the face, which is good. I was worried it was going to when I first started testing it, but it's much lighter than that. It's not serum-y level of light, but it doesn't feel super thick either. It just is very easy to blend out, which is good. Um, it's just, it's too orangey, man. Just can't get into it. All right, so there's the layer on my face. It's like going into my hairline a little bit. Um, it's okay, it's okay, we can make it work still. It's looking a little streaky, and it's like blending into my foundation really well. I'm gonna try and add a little bit more concealer down here, because like I genuinely want this to work, guys. I wanted to prove everyone wrong and show you how great these products are, but they're not they're not making this very easy for me. Is that a little bit better? It's not, it's not really. See if I can do like a little bit of a, like a like a nice, like really gentle contour here. Oh, it blended down too far. Now it's like a weird five o'clock shadow thing going on. Oh no! Alright. It's fairly decent. Let's continue. Next up is a powder, and this is the only one where I chose one that had few ratings, and that was only because the ones that had a lot of ratings within the powder category had really good reviews, because obviously it makes sense. Sephora's not gonna carry something that just continuously does really poorly. It is by uh, Giorgio Armani, I believe, and it is their um, Universal Nude Micro Feel Loose Powder. And people are saying in it that it is very, very sparkly. So this this should be fun. Um, and we're just gonna dump a little bit out into the cap here. Let's see what this looks like on my hand. I don't see any glitter. I don't know what you're talking about, Sephora Raiders. This looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna use the little puff that it came with because I actually like um, the puffs for applying um, powder to the face. It seems to be doing a good job making me look all like blurred out and like really good. Nope, I'm gonna say that was totally unfair rating. It seems to be really good. Oh, that's a relief because this was expensive. It feels very smooth, really like micro fine level of um, powder. I really like that. Um, and so far so good. It makes everything really blurred out and pretty like I didn't apply products that I hated to my face. That's awesome. All right, cool. One product so far, I really like it. Yay! Next up is blush and it is the um, Too Faced Sweet Peach Glow Palette. Now I will say this, I have talked about this product and that I do not like this product and the reason I don't like it is because it is a trio of products and I found that the bronzer wasn't really bronzy and the highlight wasn't very highlighty but I really like the blush. But everything else was really highly reviewed or was not reviewed enough. Um, so it was like, like a brand new product or something like that. So I'm gonna use this 
I don't think it's worth the money because of the fact that it has two products in it that don't really work really well for me. Um, but I do really like this blush. It has a little bit of like a really subtle gold sheen to it. So it makes your skin look nice and glowy. And I like the undertone. It's nice and warm. It's pretty. It's a pretty blush. Next up is a highlighting palette. I have talked about it and that I did not like it, but there's a reason for it. Um, it is the uh, Sephora Pro Dimensional Highlighting Palette in Cool. And it is a highlighting palette. It is a cream-based highlighting palette. Uh, looks like this. When I swatched it originally, it is not pigmented at all. Like, it's just, like, it's nothing at all here. It's just, it, feel, it feels and looks like grease. The reason for this palette is actually for um, photographers. It's great for photos. It really shows off that reflection and that highlight in a very um, glowy, dewy way. Um, but for like the everyday kind of situation, not so much. So I'm gonna apply the supposed to be the strongest highlight of the bunch, which is Chromosphere, uh, which looks like this. It's not, it's not super strong, but again, it's not, it's not meant for me. This is meant for legit photographers. There we go. Just apply more grease to my face. A bit of a blue undertone to it. That's nice. All right, there we go. Face makeup is complete and from far away, it looks totally almost normal. Now we are going to go on to the brows and we are going to be using the Bobbi Brown Long Wear Brow Gel and this is in the shade Blonde, which first of all I thought was hilarious because look at the color. That is blonde everyone. If you pick that up, would you think that's blonde? Because, because I didn't. But anyway, it doesn't matter. We're gonna go with it. This is another one of those products. It only had 26 ratings, but it was a case of it's either going to have 26 or six ratings or like 5,000 ratings and be like four star, you know? According to the reviews online, apparently you can't build up the color very well. It's very sheer, low levels of pigmentation. In applying it, it feels very much on the serum-y side, I wanna say. Like, it, it feels much heavier than um, most of the products I use. Not heavier, just it doesn't feel like it's gonna stay in place, you know? Like it feels very slippery, I guess. You can see what they mean by low levels of pigmentation. Like it's, it is really hard to build up the color here. It's very, very light. Like I can't get a very crisp line with it and my brows aren't terrible to begin with. Like I, I feel like I have a fairly decent shape to them and it's more just kind of fixing little areas where I'm, I'm missing hairs, but this is just not super pigmented. Like, it, it just makes it really difficult to get anything into the brows. Ugh, now this product is starting to get annoying. All I wanna do is fill in this little area right here, and it's just not letting me do that, and it's getting really irritating. Okay, I tried, guys. It's just not working for me. I really don't like this product. It is getting super irritating. I think there are way better brow products at Sephora, and this one is just a bust for me. Next up for the eyes, we're gonna start by priming the eyes, and I'm gonna be using the Kat Von D Color Correcting Eyeshadow Primer. I have talked about this product before in that I don't like it because I find it to be very chalky and difficult to blend out. It just doesn't do a really good job, in my opinion. It's very drying. Um, and I feel like the eyeshadow sort of like crumbles on it. All right, now on to eyeshadow, and I'm going to be using the Too Faced White Chocolate Chip Palette. Again, this is another product I've actually talked about not really liking that much. I will continue to use it uh, because I have it, and it smells smells really nice. I like it. it. Smells like baking. I just found like the color selection wasn't great. There's a lot of glitters and frosty shades, pastels. Then there's this like glittery black shade off in the corner. I don't know. I just can't see myself using this on an everyday basis. So we're going to start all over with this white color, sort of like a base because I find that this white shade is not super pigmented. And for that purpose, it'll make a good base for our eyeshadow. Next, I'm gonna go in with this shade right here, and I'm going to be applying that to the crease. And then I'm going to take this matte shade over here, and I'm gonna apply that on top, just to kind of deepen the crease up a little bit. Then I'm gonna take a smaller brush in this shade, and I'm gonna apply that underneath the eyes. And because that is the darkest matte shade in this entire palette, I'm gonna go again, and I'm just gonna try and deepen up this outer corner a little bit. Then I. I think I want to take this nice um, pinky shade here and I'm going to apply that to the lid just to kind of add a little pop of something. Well, that one's nice. I mean, it would be nice if it wasn't like chunking up because of the Kat Von D primer. I guess we'll try this white shade in the inner corners. It looks so great right now. What else do I need to apply to my eyes? Oh, the eyeliner. I already hate this one. This is the Sephora I Love Cushion Glossy Eyeliner. And I hate it for a couple of reasons. <laughs> Number one is the um, brush that it came with. I was going to use a different brush, 
but I, I want to go with the one that they use, they have in the kit that comes with it. Um, and it's a terrible brush because it makes you want to poke your eyeballs out. It hurts so much. Try and be very gentle so I don't hurt myself here. Like little itty bitty cactus needles just poking me right along the lash line. Feels really good. Um, so that's as much product as I could apply to the eyes before I need to redip. Just so you guys all, all know what's going on. Look at that line. That looks really good. I'm like digging this in by the way. I'm like filling this with product. Really trying to make it work. Okay, so that is as good as this liner is going to get. I really did try and like make it look nice and even, but it kept drying out. The product, I forgot another reason why I didn't like this, is that the product dries out really quickly on the brush, regardless of what brush it is, and it just clumps up there, and then you don't get a really nice crisp line. And so while it does swatch well, I remember swatching in my hand, I was like, oh, this is nice and pigmented and rich and black. It does that for the first time, and then you have to keep washing your brush. And who's going to have time to do that when there are way better black liners out there? So... Just saying, this one, terrible. Now onto the mascara, I have curled my lashes. We're going on to a mascara I have never tried before, and it is the Makeup Forever Aqua Smoky Extravagant Waterproof Mascara. Why didn't the internet like this mascara? Let's find out. So according to the reviews, in terms of what people have not been liking about the mascara, is that it for a waterproof mascara, it's not very waterproof. Also apparently it is very uh, clumpy and it also flakes under the eyes. So we will see if that is the case. But it has a very interesting sort of a, like a, like a Christmas tree, like lash wand. <laughs> Doesn't that look like a Christmas tree? Like a very dark, like sad Christmas tree. Oh, the wand is really, really big and you don't realize how giant this wand is until it comes right up to your eyeball it like looks like it's going to try and take it out oh my goodness okay so just to make sure i am fairly judging this product it is supposed to add length curl volume and precision to every single lash this is probably going to be something i'm going to have to do an update for you guys at the end of the day and see if it actually held up the way it was supposed to um but like so far it's not the worst mascara i've ever used but it's like not my favorite either and but like i don't mind clumpy lashes that's like not a thing for me <laughs> to me that looks like relatively fine like I, I don't I'm not mad at it like I don't know if I'd spend like $30 Canadian for it like, as of right now from first impression I can see why people rated it three stars like it's not awful but like it's not like wowing me so far for the lips the lowest rated product I could find that had a decent number of reviews was actually by Tarte this is their lip crayon um, I bought two because I didn't know what color I wanted to use one is in the shade totes and the other one is on fleek so I thought I would like swatch them on my hand see which one I want to use um, but they have a solid three stars, 267 ratings. Um, people just said that the formula somehow changed and it's very crumbly and it's not very smooth and creamy on the lips. Is this, like, I just thought this was like a cool color. It's like nice and like lavender. I don't know. And then the other shade is totes. Yeah, I can see it like there was a little bit of crumblage. We're gonna do a little purple lip. It'll be fun. So far in applying it, it is very pigmented. It goes on fairly well. It's a little bit on the pulling kind of side. It's not as creamy as some of the other products that I have. I really like the, um, I think it's by Buxom. They have some really nice lip liners that are great. They stay on really well and they're just a little bit creamier so that when you like blot your lips together you can really like feel it kind of massaging into the, the lips really nicely. This one not so much. It's a little bit harder. <laughs> and a whole chunk fell right out of the lip pencil. Uh, well, alright. Yep, no, I don't like this pencil. It's too hard of a formula. Yeah, do not recommend. I think there are better ones out there. I do like this color though. That is very, very bright. I'm gonna zoom you guys in because you need to see the, the disaster that is my skin right now. Alright, so hopefully you guys can see it, but like there's no makeup on this side of my face anymore. It's kind of clumping up in this area right here, sort of under my eyes. It's very like sticky and very, um, it just feels very wet. And you can see where my, my eyeliner is like crumbling away there. And my lips, it's like, it's picking up all the pigment in certain spots. It's like not at all nice and creamy like you want it to be. My brows are a mess. Overall, my face, it just, it's not, this is not working for me. You know what? This is an important thing. I wanted to test it out. I wanted to see if it was actually as bad as people were saying it was. And you know what? For the most part, Sephora Raiders, you are correct. Now I'm going to go about my day and I will update you guys at the end of the day. I just kind of want to know if the mascara is going to last. And like, <laughs> to be honest, let's see what a disaster my face looks like by the end of the day. So <laughs> stay tuned for that. Okay, so it is the end of the day. I was just about to take off my makeup and then I remembered 
needed to update y'all. The foundation and concealer and everything is basically entirely off my face by this point. It's just kind of like shiny and <laughs> that's pretty much pretty much it. Um, and then the eyeliner has stayed on, though a little bit patchy, and the mascara still looks good. There was no flaking or any issues with that, so I don't really have a problem with this um, particular mascara. It was pretty good. I don't know how it holds up in terms of waterproofness, but in terms of longevity throughout the day, I would say it did a pretty good job. But yeah, pretty much everything else is kind of off my face at this point, and my original first impression thoughts, they still stand. And that is everything for this video. Give it a thumbs up if you like these kinds of videos and you want to see like another worst rated maybe for Ulta or for Drugstore or something like that. Leave me your suggestions and your recommendations in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. And that's everything. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful week so far, and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you girls. Mwah.